Conservation can often feel like it's all doom and gloom. And so today on our ZSS Goes Wild, we're going to talk about a success story, about how we helped bring back an animal that had been missing from the UK for over 400 years. Today, we're gonna to talk about Scottish beavers. The Royal Zoological Society of Scotland is involved in many conservation projects, but perhaps one of the most famous is the effort to return beavers to Scotland. Many people are aware of this project, but let's start by talking about exactly what a beaver is and what makes it so special. Beavers are rodents, which puts them in the same group as mice, squirrels and capybaras. Beavers are pretty chunky for a rodent. The adults that we work with are usually weighing in around 20 to 25 kgs. This is a big, beefy animal. And they have some pretty interesting characteristics. Their teeth are orange because they contain iron, which makes them super strong. Their tail is like a big paddle, and their feet are webbed, both of which are important for animals that spend most of their time in water. Beavers much prefer to be in water than on land. They move better in water and they feel safer there. Unfortunately for beavers, the water they live in doesn't always go exactly where they want it to. And this is where beavers take matters into their own hands. Beavers are very keen on home improvements. They construct massive dams that change water flows and flood areas that they want to get to. They also build large lodges that help disguise the entrance of their homes. These modifications create lots of wetland habitat for other animals, which makes beavers amazing ecosystem engineers that boost biodiversity wherever they go. Where do they get the materials for these constructions? That's where those teeth come in. They use them to cut down trees, both for food and to use in construction. And that's an important point. Beavers are exclusively herbivorous. They only eat plants and they never eat fish. Unfortunately for beavers, they also have another characteristic, extremely soft, dense fur that makes really warm jackets and sturdy hats. And they also produce a substance called castorium that carries scent and flavor really well and historically was used a lot in perfumes and ice cream like vanilla ice cream, which is interesting because castorium comes out of a beaver's butt. So that's a lot of people who previously were eating beaver butt ice cream, not for me. As a result, Beavers were hunted to extinction in the UK and disappeared from Scotland just over 400 years ago. And that's where the Scottish Beavers Project comes in. Now, you might have noticed that today I'm not wearing my normal RZSS t-shirt, I am wearing a Scottish Beavers t-shirt. And that's because this is a partnership project between the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland and the Scottish Wildlife Trust. And we're supported in this work by Forestry and Land Scotland, Scottish Natural Heritage, and we also get support from the Heart of Argyll Wildlife Organisation. Conservation is all about partnerships, and this is a long-standing one that started when RZSS and Scottish Wildlife Trust first brought beavers to Scotland in 2009 from Norway for the Scottish Beaver Trial. This was the first official release of beavers in Scotland, and it took place in the Knapdale Forest in Argyll in Western Scotland. Fast forward to 2020, and beavers are now the first mammal to be successfully reintroduced to the UK. And they've been given European protected species status by the Scottish government. RZSS is uniquely placed to help out with this project. Because we own two zoos, we have an amazing veterinary team who are on hand to health screen all beavers before they're released into the Knapdale population. We health screen our beavers to make sure that they are fit for release. In addition, we also make sure that they are not inadvertently carrying any diseases that may cause problems for other wildlife, livestock or humans. Over the last 10 years, we've been able to streamline and hone down and speed up the process to minimise the amount of time that these beavers spend in quarantine before their release. We also have our own on-site genetics team, the Wild Genes Lab, the only zoo-based genetics lab in the UK who are responsible for the genetic monitoring of the Knapdale beaver population. And we have our field team, which is headed up by me. We're responsible for releasing beavers into Knapdale and for monitoring their movements and activity within the Knapdale forest. We rarely see beavers in the wild because they're mainly active at night. 
but fortunately for us, beavers are anything but subtle, and if they're in a place, you'll know about it because of all the modifications to the habitat that they do. So we look for beaver signs, and that could be anything from cut down trees, to dams and lodges, to things like these beaver sticks, uh, which stand out because they've had all of the bark stripped off of them, and also because they've got these little sets of double lines across them where the beaver's teeth have made marks, and that's really characteristic of beaver sign, and if you ever find uh, trees or branches that have been cut by beavers, you'll see these sort of pointy pencil end cuts, and also these sort of double, double line ridges that you can actually feel the marks that the teeth have made there, so that's really handy. And occasionally, we do full surveys by catching beavers in Knapdale with the help of beaver expert Rasheen Campbell Palmer. And this allows us to get a feel for the size of the population and whether any kits have been born. We did a full survey like this in September 2019, and it gave us some very exciting news when we found out that some of the beavers that we had recently moved across had gone on to have kits, which we were able to capture, tag and sample before releasing. This shows that our reinforcement efforts in Knapdale are working. So beavers are back in Scotland, and hopefully they will have a long and secure future in this country. Our work to secure the future of beavers and other animal species all over the planet is supported by visitors to our zoos. Unfortunately, at the moment our zoos are closed, but you can still help save threatened species by clicking on the Support Us link that you can see here and below the video, and donating whatever you can to RZSS Conservation. In the next episode of RZSS Goes Wild, we're going to be looking at how we follow tough to track species like beavers and giant armadillos and wildcats and a whole lot more using camera traps to gain insights into the amazing secret lives of these animals. I will see you then. <laughs>